In an online statement released in just the past couple of hours, a branch of Al-Qaeda has claimed responsibility for the attempted Christmas airliner attack. It says it was payback for alleged U.S. strikes in Yemen. Our CNN Pentagon correspondent Barbara Starr joins us now. Barbara, it appears that more and more what we're seeing is activities out of Yemen when it comes to Al-Qaeda, a, a more serious threat against the United States. What do we know? Indeed, Suzanne, this has been a worry now for some time. Already, the Pentagon is funneling about $65 million a year to Yemen to fight Al-Qaeda. But behind the scenes, there is much more going on. This is the front line in the new U.S.-funded secret war against al-Qaeda terrorists and training camps here in Yemen. Al-Qaeda now claiming the attack against Northwest Airlines Flight 253 was in direct retaliation. CNN has confirmed U.S. involvement is deepening in Yemen. In recent weeks, several airstrikes, an al-Qaeda operative eulogizes fellow fighters. A Yemeni official tells CNN shortly after this, the man is killed in yet another raid. General David Petraeus sounded warnings months ago. And, uh, that's where al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has established its headquarters. This is a concern. In recent months, both General Petraeus and John Brennan, President Obama's top counterterrorism advisor, personally warned Yemeni President Ali Abdullah Saleh that al-Qaeda was targeting his inner circle. A senior U.S. official confirms to CNN that intelligence agencies and military special operations teams are helping Yemen, providing intelligence, training, and weapons. U.S. officials say they gave Yemen intelligence on al-Qaeda targets, but won't say if American warplanes or armed drones conducted the recent strikes. Senator Joe Lieberman offered one of the few public hints. We have a growing presence there, and we have to, uh, of special operations, Green Berets, intelligence. If we don't act preemptively, Yemen will be tomorrow's war. That's the danger we face. That's one reason the U.S. is so worried about the claims by the Northwest Airlines suspect. He says he traveled to Yemen and was given bomb-making materials there by al-Qaeda. Look at the map and you see the immediate potential for disaster. Al-Qaeda operatives in Yemen are within striking distance of Saudi oil facilities. Hundreds of vulnerable cargo ships pass the coastline each year. One reason al-Qaeda has established Yemen as its safe haven, the keep battling tribal rebels in both the north and the south. There is a very real sense that the central government is losing control over most of the country. And a senior U.S. official tells CNN that in recent weeks, President Saleh has done a turnaround in Yemen, that he is now willing to accept more U.S. help because he has now come to understand the situation in his own country fighting al-Qaeda has grown dire. Suzanne? Thank you, Barbara. I want to bring in our CNN national security contributor, Francis Fargos Townsend, the former Homeland Security Advisor to President Bush. Fran, thanks for, for joining us here. Al-Qaeda in Yemen now claiming responsibility for this attack. You've dealt with them before, going back to 2000 when you had the, the USS uh, bombing, the U.S. coal bombing. Is, does the Bush administration bear any responsibility at this point that we're still dealing with al-Qaeda in Yemen? Well, there's no doubt, Suzanne, I made numerous trips myself, just as we reported that John Brennan uh, and others in the current administration have made. Um, we pushed during the Bush administration, President Saleh and his government, very, very hard. Um, there have been numerous attacks on our embassy in Sana'a. Uh, there was a huge prison break. Uh, they, they have been unreliable partners, frankly. They've been inconsistent. And while Barbara is saying that the administration is now saying that President Saleh gets the problem, um, he's gotten it in the past. They're just not consistent. And I think we ought to be concerned about that. Do you think that uh, Senator Lieberman had suggested a preemptive strike, if you will, in Yemen against al-Qaeda? Do you think that's a good idea? Is that well, what the Obama administration should do? Well, I doubt that the Obama administration will even put that on the table. I just don't think that that a preemptive option is consistent with what we know about President Obama's uh, counterterrorism policy. I will say this. 
Um, I think Senator Joe Lieberman is absolutely right that unless we take very strong, decisive action uh, and push the Yemeni government on the counterterrorism issue, we will continue to see a threat emanate out of Yemen to the United States. You've dealt with uh, the president there before. You say he's uncooperative. What do you suggest the Obama administration do? Well, we're, we, we had started during the Bush administration, and, and the Obama administration has continued. What you need to do is to provide them with intelligence and capability, but then hold them accountable for action. Um, what, when I say that they're unreliable, it's the action part. We were providing them with capability before. Um, the question is, will they grow their own capability and permit us freedom of action to help them? And that's going to be the real test over the next coming months. I want to go back to the uh, the attempt over the uh, Christmas holiday, obviously. The TSA put out new guidelines shortly afterwards to the airlines saying new rules are set up here, that you can't have uh, pillows or blankets uh, an hour before you land the plane uh, or laptops. People can't go to the bathroom. We heard from the TSA again today. They essentially said, well, it's the flight attendant's discretion now. Does this mean anything? I mean, does it have any teeth at all if you can flip it over like that and just say, well, you know, maybe you don't have to do it? Well, I, I thought the, the, the new measures made good sense. I mean, after all, we understood in the 2006 Heathrow bo potential bombing plot that they were going to use the bathroom in order to assemble the device. Clearly, that's what this guy tried to do on the Northwest Airlines flight. And so that it made sense they put the new restriction in place. Of course, people complain. It's inconvenient. Um, and so I think it's unfair to put that on the shoulders of the flight crew uh, who have to interact with passengers. Really, the, the bottom line here, though, Suzanne, is we typically see a plot, we disrupt it, and then we institute new measures that would have prevented that plot from actually being successful. The goal here ought to be, in terms of prevention and counterterrorism, is to get ahead of the uh, get ahead of the curve, and that is put these measures in place before they try to pull so off the next So how do you change plot. that, though? Because at this point, it just seems like we're being reactionary. Right. Well, th that comes down to your investment in intelligence. You know, we increased the amount of investment in intelligence during the Bush administration uh, after the peace dividend had really stripped away a lot of the resources the uh, intelligence community was getting. Um, but it's a matter of taking that intelligence that you gather and making good use of it, sharing it interagency with screeners, with the Department of Homeland Security, and making sure that you move it quickly and, and are able to put measures in place to thwart them. You've got four different terror watch lists that we know of, at least. The broadest one is the one that netted him, but essentially uh, it, it gets further and further uh, detailed. You know, federal authorities are reevaluating the various terror watch lists after that failed attack. And the suspect's name, it, wasn't on, it was on the broadest list, the Terror Identities Data Smart Environment, or TIDE. Now, that includes more than a half billion people suspected of being linked to terrorist activities. It is run by the National Counterterrorism Center. Now, the FBI, it has a more consolidated version of that list with about 400,000 people. It's called the Terror Screening Database, or TSDB. Now, your name can be on either one of those lists, and you still are not going to be required to have any additional screening at the airport. Extra screening doesn't kick in until your name pops up on this list. That's the Transportation Security Administration has this selectee list of 14,000 people. There's a much smaller group yet, fewer than 4,000, who are on the TSA's no-fly list. That's designed to prevent known terrorists from getting on the plane. So you've got all of these lists here. If you don't net the guy who is the most dangerous, what, what, what good is all of this? Well, that, that's right. And, and that's, I think, why you've seen the president come out today and order a review of the watch list process. Um, John Brennan, who's his Homeland Security Advisor, was in government during the prior administration and helped set this system up. So he understands very well the standards that apply to get on each of these lists. Obviously, this doesn't work. To your point, if this guy gets on with high explosives, the system isn't working, and it will be the responsibility of John Brennan and, and Secretary Napolitano to make sure that the standards are right, that to be adjusted to make sure you do net the guy before he tries to get on with high explosives. What does somebody need to do to get on the no-fly list? Well, it, it, there's a whole criteria, but it, in, in essence, Suzanne, you have to be uh, known to have information. There has to be information in the system that suggests that you are a direct threat to aviation, not that you are just a, an extremist or a radical, but that you are, for some reason, they expect you are a threat to aviation security. Um, and obviously, this was uh, the information from his father was not specific enough to cause somebody to put him on that list. Of course, people will go back and examine that decision uh, because we were obviously didn't get it. Okay, Fran Townsend, thank you so much for joining us. You're Appreciate welcome. your insights.